Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Ring Ru. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we are back with more Red Storm 44. And today, we're actually on Babor, which is kind of nice because we haven't seen this map in a while. I'll tell you who we have seen. We have seen these players before, but Rang, what do they bring into the fray? On left hand side in blue, we have Jard Blodge playing Group Hartnick with Balanced Income. On the right hand side in the red, we have Green HC playing Ninth Mechanize with a V for Victory Income. So you and I were discussing both these divisions before we went live here. Why V for Victory for one? Uh, well, you only usually have like two choices in Red Storm mm -hmm. with like each of the divisions, so. I don't know what the other one is for ninth mech, but like it's not really that bad. It's pretty similar to balanced income, really. <laughs> well, it gets if nothing else, it gives a nice normal bell curve of income. And if you're looking yeah. at a lot of the material that he's got here, he's not quite in the same boat as we see with Jardabaj over here, who is is somewhat we thought optimistic with his army setup. Why? What was so optimistic about that? Where he took like three C phase cards of tigers. That's Trove Tigers. I don't feel like he's going to be able to buy Trove Tigers in C phase, all things considering. Another run in A phase would probably been a bit better as he only had one. And then just with the income, I don't think that's going to happen. Same with the infantry. With Redstorm, C phase in terms of availability is not as important compared to vanilla, as just due to the sudden death time mechanic, as well as just the prevalence of the length of B phase. B phase is definitely the phase you want to try and work for. So, sudden death mechanic, we haven't hit that very often. You want to tell the folks at home what that is? It pretty much just uh, once you get to like 40, 35, 40 minutes. Some, like, I don't know the exact time, but once you get, once the match has lasted so long, the, the points just tick down faster. Yes. Yes, now don't quote me on that one either, because that was exactly what my understanding was. It was one of those moments <laughs> where I was like, I'm sure Ray knows the exact time, and I feel better being in the same boat at least. Yeah, but actually, uh, concerning the opening of this match, both sides actually playing fairly defensive. We're not seeing any crazy bridge rushes, which is usually the thing that a lot of players like to do in bubble, try to get across one of the bridges in er early. We are seeing on the Bullsack Island, however, Green HC going to be pushing close quarters with some after Mashikis, which, once again, SMG troops and forest, pretty damn deadly. They are, but even these Vita Pioneers are not quite the same thing about the Bavarogs that we had seen uh, over on Tuesday, so I imagine the PP shots will have a much harder time than they would be previously. Yeah, for three of them in the forest, that is definitely... And also the Veteran Sheet bonus as well is going to help out here. Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, seen a lot. Please go, yes. No, this is a little bit of long-range play from the 45 mil down south. And, yeah, goes just as expected. Was he trying to tickle the um, MG34? Pardon? Was he trying to tickle the MG34? Was he oh, no, it was stuck. Ah, yeah, that, that generally is only going to have one way to go through it. Uh, BF109, in the meantime, makes a gun run at the Dushka and somehow manages to put the bombs on the wrong side of the road, so... I guess we now have an answer to the age-old question of why the BF109 crossed the road. <laughs> The bomb on the other side. Exactly right. Exactly right. You thought I was make a chicken comment there, but that would have laid an egg. Um, looking elsewhere, Dushka now making a rather big push. And I say big, but for when you when you have a simple 500 you know rounds of 12-7, you're not there to be a frontline unit. No, but that's going to be almost knocking out the off clear. Yeah, and here we go. We got the forest fight going on between the pioneers and the. Uh... After Machikis and Sapperis, it could go pretty deadly to either side, really. That's true, but you have to remember, as a pioneer, only they can prevent flo uh, forest fighters. <laughs> um, and the Superiors, actually, I feel like the Superiors being up front, I think this is exactly the squad you want to have up here. Just as a quick reminder, these guard troops, insane kind of buffs behind it. So 12% stress resilience, it doesn't seem like much only having that single bit. But that 12% is pretty much kind of throwing in another officer, and we do already have a Comparati right behind it. Yeah, yeah. the Pioneers are actually falling back for now at least, so Green HC is getting the better of this engagement. Now he's going to be flanking around a bit with the Duska, trying to get some eyes on to 
any of the infantry if they retreat out into the open. And he's managing to pick them off run by run, which is exactly what you want to be doing in this scenario. Very true. Now, kind of funny, we see a really early tiger. And thankfully, he's been there brought in to fight that most hideous of beasts, the Dushka. Mm -hmm. um, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. I'd, I'd surrender. Yeah. I mean, a Dushka by itself is already pretty scary, but on an American car, scarier. Indeed. And this forest, yeah, geez, this forest is going badly. Mm hmm. He is helped by the fact that this northern, let's say, position for the hillside, not really the most intently held. And indeed, it's not even the most active of defenses. It's just kind of like very anemic. It's just like this, you know, this hand wave that kind of happens instead. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the tiger being brought in, you know, I don't know if he's really going to be able to do too much. I mean, once he, I mean, he can't kill the scary Duska, of course, but I mean, it's a very infantry focused fight. And I feel like he needs to just slap in some more CQC infantry to fight over said forest, but he doesn't have a... He has a decent amount of A phase tree, but not a whole lot. So I feel like by the end of A phase, he's definitely going to be struggling a little bit, especially now because he just brought like almost half of his infantry to just try and secure his northern flank. But then looking at what he's up against, he's not going to have perfect parity because what Soviet division is, you know, equal to a German one in terms of numbers. Um, you know, but flip that flip that around in terms of the magnitude here. Yeah. Um, because so much of this is going to usually be how how quickly can the Soviets work away at the German ability to resist, and that's what you and that's as the Germans that's what you have right there. You have you know the air power to come in. You have the tanks to kind of offset that issue. So I guess it's it's usually just a question of how can you best kind of stem the bleeding. Yeah, it's it's just the classic quantity versus quality argument, really. I mean, the psyche here can pretty much knock out. All of the armor Green HC can essentially bring in, but it's just getting it into a good position. And Jardabod's lovely bombing run with that BF-109 clearing out the forest here, so... I mean, with the infantry reinforcements being brought in, he should be able to push pretty deeply back into here. I mean, you got those guard superiors here, but... Those guard superiors are really just an excuse to throw a satchel charge, because the main equipment of just nine Mossins is not that great. No. No, it's not. Uh, and I guess, honestly, between the, I guess the Sturmreiters, I, I don't know that that's going to go much better. No. Yeah, the Sturmreiters are pretty nasty, as it's a pretty beefy STG squad, yeah. Yeah, I'm showing the people over here as well. Plus 10 accuracy, 15% rate of fire, 50% stress resilience, yeah. Yeah, not uh, pretty nasty. Yeah. And we're going to see but that first thing actually happen over here, and Jesus, there's Faust in them too, which I kind of forgot about. Um, but I'm pretty sure if those, you know, 85s and the 76s get closer, they're going to find out pretty darn quickly. Yes. I do want to so see this is, first engagement. Yes, sir? No, this is going to be pretty interesting for the Tiger here because, I mean, he can knock out most of the armor, but that T-3045 is, does have, you know, the capability of pretty easily knocking out the Tiger if it does get close. But here comes another bombing run. And by Jeez. God, these BF run on range have been absolutely killer. Yes, they have. Um, and he and he killed. He killed. It was the the proper target uh, in everything. Yeah, like knocked out the eighty five. So now the T thirty four seventy six is can't really do too much against any potential tiger threat. But Jardabarch has been very cautious of how it's moving his tiger, and by cautious I mean not moving at all currently because I don't think he has very good eyes on to really judge and where you want to move it. But that's the thing though is that you don't want them to be scout tanks. They are not scout tanks. They should never try to be scout tanks. Oh, I've must I must have been doing it wrong. Well this I'm is a go and you're, not, you're not driving an Atlas, my friend. <laughs> oh. I was just doing my Steiner, you know, scout launch, you know? <laughs> For it's like two King Tigers, you know, a tiger and a panther. I mean the Panther's technically a recon tank. That's true. That's true. At 35 tons, that actually, that's absolutely true. <laughs> this one doesn't have a PPC. No. Um, now, it's not a 35, it's not a 35 ton, though, is it? It's just like a 40... The, pa the, the Panther in Battletech or yeah, Panther so that, in World War II? Ton. On World yeah, War II, I'm going to Yeah, the Panther in World War II is like 50 tons, which is quite funny when you think about it. 
Oh, it's because I'm like, it's it's sad. I know the technical specifications, I think, for Battletech Panther are far more than the WW2 one, and we see it far more often. <laughs> um, I do like the small tank park that's over here flanking around. He's definitely got the idea of what he needs to be doing. Now, yeah. unfortunately, there's also a duck on the way, and he's already got one kill. And even with that 37 mil palm, that's not going to be enough, I think, to really kind of... Ooh, wow. Jeez. Yeah, that tiger is just... will not be denied. Nope. Here we got multiple tanks attacking it from multiple angles here, so... It's not the best position for Sword Tiger to be in, and Jardabod... Oh, no, he's gonna go in. But he... Oh, he has the stug backing him up, so he should be fine. He's at the two stugs, and he's got this little, like, weird infantry counter push that's happening as well, like, that could potentially yeah. do something. I feel like it's going to get really close. This is a little bit dangerous. Oh, yeah, just because of the upgraded pen chance in this range? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he's got he's killing the right targets and everything. And here comes the Shogs from behind. The Shogs, oh, wait, the Shogs are engaging. Oh, the 37 mil. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the SU-70, the Stug is not in range or position to shoot the SU-76, which is flanking forever. But, you know, the Tiger does have pretty thick side armor, so it's just going to keep it alive. Track's broken. Loader's Loader killed. Kill. Oh, jeez. What's that Soviet movie? It's like White Tiger or something like that? or it... The World War II one? Yeah. Yeah, right, Tiger. Yeah, I was just saying, it's completely overdone. I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, That was definitely one of those moments there. Yeah. But yeah, the Tiger just completely killing everything, and this is going pretty well for... Well, Atia, take it back. It's not going pretty well for Jardabot in the forest. There's all this Soviet reinforcements, uh, German infantry that are slowly getting picked off. He is starting to do his push show to try and capture that uh, flag near the bridge, and he is going to be able to get... Yeah, I'll be curious if he decides to push across the other side. Why bother? It's just hold the position right now, play for the mid-game, and then... If you are going to get those Tigers out, you want to be playing for a longer game anyway. Yeah. But I'm, I'm rather curious and if he does decide to get more Tigers, because this isn't the best Tiger map. It's pretty close quarters. I mean, if he does manage to completely break through to the enemy side, and yes, the Tiger just covering the supply lines, it's killer. But also, it's pretty killer as the anti air, is that uh, Discount Duck did get shot down. <laughs> well, the... BF109 comes back in, he's making another kind of crazy run. He's gonna kill his own troops. Oh, nope, never mind, they surrendered. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow, he didn't, get, he didn't even get bombs off either. Yeah, 37 mil, just not gonna have any of that nonsense now, is he? Apparently not, which is kind of weird. Yeah. I thought there were much more, much more plucky, fun guys than that, but, um... No music in their hearts. Pretty mean-spirited. Indeed. I'm really curious to see what this uh, superior squad is going to do. I feel like he's just, yeah, he's going to ambush. The pans going to do is getting close. Will he be able to do much, yo? He's going to erode some of the combat strength, but I, I really yeah. would be surprised. He's surviving much longer than I expected. The ambush specialist is definitely a very rough our trait, and actually, just holding on long enough for does good to provide some fire support here. But yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah. Didn't do terrible considering how outnumbered he was, yeah. The dish is gonna go pretty terrible against those Stugs, though. Yes. Once they decide to start firing at him. There we go. Alright, target acquisition is a thing. Oh, that's why he was aiming in the wrong direction. My friend, your enemy's not... to the eastern front, not the west. Yeah. <laughs> this Stug is having a very difficult time. Oh my god, did you ever play Dawn of War 2? Yeah. It's like the vehicle micro in that. It was absolutely <laughs> freaking awful. Oh, yeah, this, is, yeah, yeah. this will just remind me of like Company of Arrows and trying to micro tanks. That was better because you could force them into, into you know, a reverse. But this is. Their machine guns might actually kill before the main guns do. Yeah. Which is a bit sad. It but, deserves a more honorable ending. Yeah. Yeah. But nonetheless, Jardabods does get the flag, so it does bring it back to a 12 trove here. But yeah, the forest is still under Green HC's control. He does have a... Not as much CQC troops in here as compared to before. 
but still enough to hold on to the forest at least. And Judge Botch is going to be replying back with some SS Pioneers, because we are now into B phase, so he does have, you know, quite a few Pioneer troops to look forward to. He certainly does. I'm kind of curious to see, we're going to have, I think that the Stug G is going to start to engage that armor on the northern flank. Yes, he will. I don't know if that's really the kind of engagement I want to be taking. Even to Stug, and that, yeah. Yeah. Scratch is a better part of Valor. I'm also anticipating that he's going to take this airsatch from Raito, he's going to stick him on into the front, and then, yeah, we got tons and tons of air power going towards the front here. This is this yeah. is the absolute right call. Yeah, not enough anti-air to stop it, and as we've seen, those BF-109s have had a nasty track record. Knocks out the 85, the discount duck, didn't really do anything. No, he's definitely a lame duck so far. I think, yeah. I think his, his brother had one kill before he flew the coup. Yeah. Yes, I'm aware ducks don't live in coops. Um, I'm actually surprised. Oh, there we go. He's also identifying with that anti -air is. Um I am surprised he didn't dedicate one of those to start hitting this infantry position. Or maybe he's got one more kind of in the back pocket just in case. Yeah. We're all seeing the stocks push across the bridge, but there's a Joseph Stalin Mark II tank being brought in. And that's a pretty big gun for blowing up pretty big tanks. Yeah, the only way that could have been any more bridge too far is if those guys been in light skinned vehicles. Yeah. Jeez, and leopard run tanks. My god. But yeah, it's this bridge or so is just not going to happen. The LIS2 definitely changes the playing field a bit, as those tigers are going to be necessary in trying to knock out the big Joseph Stalins. Or maybe just the air power runs again. Those BF run online to have a pretty good track record so far. I'm trying to see about other tanks that we get brought in early here. We could potentially see two tigers. There's another hero tiger over here in the support tab. Excuse me, a combat tiger in the support tab. Yeah. Um. I don't know that I really will call either one of those in. Like again, you and I were talking about this. I would fundamentally probably change the way I would have set up this heart in my group. Especially from the vehicle perspective, I think I'd be dropping a lot of these tigers. I and, you know, and I'm a tiger guy. I love them. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched Tiger King, but I, I'm, I'm a big tiger guy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once again, he's, I, he's a little bit optimistic in his C-Phase Tiger. You really only need one of them, take one in B-Phase, and maybe just get like another tank or an A-Phase Tiger. Because, yeah, I just don't think it's really going to work out all that well for him. I mean, he does have two Tiger Commanders in B-Phase. He's already got run out, but against those IS-2s, that's going to be quite nasty. And Green Hate C does have three IS-2s and B-Faith available to him, so it's, it's going to be pretty tough to try and push up against. Shockingly enough, the Commander Tiger is actually on the field, I missed him here, and somehow he managed to not get hit by the Yak-9B's cluster run. Hmm, alright. But even Manson. then, there's an Ultima Cheeky across the river, and he is definitely stealing a flag here. It's really, really close. Yikes. Close, but he does manage to get it. The forest fight, however, is going pretty good to have a charge. He does have the flam pioneers through flamethrowers and explosive charges as well, so he's just completely mopping up the Russian infantry inside this forest here. Yep, and I actually agree with the way that he's resetting this too. I would probably have the pioneers get reloaded a little bit first before I rush in there, but um, yeah. I admire the optimism. But we're almost 20 minutes in, which means that we should be, at this point, in the middle part of that V for victory, aren't we? Yeah, we've got like another 11 minutes or so of B phase until we eventually hit the slump of C phase. And... You know, we're just getting through our main course right now. Well, and I think it's kind of a good thing. You know, let them clear the plate away, get the new table mm -hmm. out. Now, unfortunately, this does mean that... A lot of these Dushkas that are starting to run a little bit heavier in, in herds up to the north, there's got to be a break point between what Jardabosh is expecting and what he's going to do against that, because he can't let that continue to build anymore. No, that's a pretty nasty force which is starting to build up here. And I feel like Green Haze Sea Roll, I mean, once he clears out this central, or if he does manage to clear out the forest area, I feel like he could do a pretty good 
push across the bridge and try to get back onto the outside of the map. There's really only one tiger stopping him for now. We've got two stags being brought in as well, but once again, the Lion's 2 just needs to knock out the tiger and it evens the playing field a bit. Not in a Where did the IS-2 go? Did he die? I'm sorry? Where did that IS-2 go? I think... Oh, he's dead. Was that for the tiger? Go... I believe... I believe so. Damn. I was... Pretty good, yeah, never mind. Tiger at... I, I do forget Tiger at close range against IS-2s can actually... Oh, close range rotation Yeah, I, I, I hear the air quotes yeah. there. Air quotes, yeah. You know... Can't actually penetrate the armor. Yak 9B going for that tiger again. No, he's going for the. He's, no, he kills two tigers. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> what a. What a bombing run, right? Yeah, he definitely paid himself off in the M-Sum. And if I was in Jardabosh's head right about now, I am cussing up a storm and I'm, you know, wondering what I did to offend the higher powers. Yeah. But damn, that is. That's a pretty big kill, so Jardabaj only has this one tiger now to try and hold off his front line. Just this whole, well, I don't say horde of T-34s, but there's quite a few of them, and I've got another 85 being brought in. But Jard still has the stunks available, and they can hold off quite well against the armor. Ah, uh, yes, but don't worry, he's got many t uh, cards over here of sea face tigers. Mm-hmm, that's... He better bring out like your sea face tigers. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna bring trove of him, I I want to see at least half. Well, there's there's a ooh wow 85 already down. Um, yeah. there's a piece of me that's wondering if he is being very very careful with the funds that he's spending. Like banking. Yeah. Banking his points so he can rip out sea face tigers and infantry. Yeah. Yeah, either that or he's going to, like, Chuck E. Cheese and he's going to turn in all of his tickets and get an eraser. Like, it's one or the other. <laughs> Do they not have Chuck E. Cheese in Canada? The, no, but we have, like, similar arcades. And I know exactly, you know, the rip-off of his ticket. So, yeah, I was just saying, the, the, the Freddy Fazbear of the real world. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it's pushed across the bridge here from Green Hay C has... Not really going that well. Jada Barnes has manned a counter-attack with some Stugs, and that's going to clear out the rest of the infantry here. So, that should even it back to a 12 troll once again. And yeah, everything's really happening on the northern flank. If we just look down south, it is all cries on the southern flank. Neither side really wanting to make any push happen across any of these bridges, and I don't really blame him. This is the map that definitely punishes uh, pushing like, along the southern area. Just due to the bridge locations. Well, other than that kind of brief exchange of fire in the opening moments, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, you really just have to do your, you know, early A phase rush across the bridge if you want a good chance of making any offensive maneuvers in that area. But in the meantime, we are going to see this SG 43 continue to kind of cause some havoc along the retreating German lines. Um. And really outside of that, what is that just being brought down in? I'm seeing another IS-2, and, and then an, and another 85. I, I'm starting to wonder if our mechanized friend over here is starting to run a little light on AFVs. Yeah, he has lost like quite a few tanks already. He does have the sea phase card of T-3045s to help out as well, but I mean, he's He's holding on to the territory, at least, to get up 1311, so he can just continue just, you know, trading like this to get the victory, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it, it's a great concern. I mean, he only has two IS-2s left. I mean, no, no, Super Scaria is close range, as we've seen before, but, you know, they still have a, you know, it's still a relatively good chance of blowing up a Tiger. Here's a question. There's a Commandant in the south, and while we are now seeing, I mean, with God Vision, seeing some Soviets being reinforcing to the south, would you ever consider rotating your Commandant north? Yes, hmm. it would mean a hefty bit of a walk, but would that be worthwhile here, do you think? You mean... 
literally walk this guy, you know, from oh, the yeah, yeah. position. Okay, all the way you're up. the down, yeah. I was looking at the Russian side for some oh, reason, no, but yeah, so Yeah, honestly that might actually be a good good call. Just for the better influence in the northern sector. But it would definitely be a little bit of a rule for the Commandant, and I think he's a bit of a lazy bugger. Yeah, yeah, but maybe get a nice staff car out there. You know, oh yeah, a supply truck to pick him up, he can yes. sit in with all the munitions. Exactly. Speaking of munitions, the Yak-9 coming in for a cluster bombing run. This is going to get Thief. two more kills, watch this, at least two. Of course, when it doesn't matter, he doesn't kill. <laughs> yeah, Jadabot's managing to, you know, just dodge those bombs, yeah, by micro and his thugs all the way. Very good micro, that's for sure, saving those tanks' lives. But, seeing of how things are actually being built up down south here from Green HD, getting his third and final IS 2 in the south and flank, which I definitely think is a fantastic spot to put it on that hill. I feel like Green HD is going to try and open up a, a southern flank here, and this could work really well for him. You know, I'm trying to think about where I would put that 88. I don't like a lot of the positions here. Yeah, that 88 is not in a good... I mean, probably for anti-aircraft duty, yeah. but... Yeah. I mean, not so much in trying to cover that bridge. So, to be fair, there's not a whole lot of areas where you could put that 88 to safely cover that bridge approach. True. That is certainly true. Um, but we're going to see another massive scrum, I think, happen here in the north in about the next minute or two as more and more and more Bagleeds pioneers are being brought on in. Yeah. But I do agree with you. The fact that we're seeing an IS-2 to the south says, yes, we have a second front. That's where the Dushka is going in to unmask anti-tank positions. Unfortunately, he's going to run into an MG-34 first. Um, so, some small hassles here and there. Yeah. Holy crap, that's like a Trove Man MG-34 team. Yes, it is. It's like 12 guys, so how, how many assets do you need to man an MG-34, Khan? <laughs> well, the, the trick is you have to just wrap them up in ammo belts, and that's how they're able to carry all of that ammo. So they, they just kind of <laughs> spin around like it's like a, I don't know, a, a, don't even know, cogs in a machine. Like a blender. Exactly. Yeah. They were just holding, like, it's just one belt of 3,000 rounds, and they were just, like, holding it in one massive line. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, forgive me for cutting this off as this merry um, kind of um, observance, but the Germans are making their own push to the north. Yeah, they're starting to make their own northern flank here as well. Definitely more heavy and stuck right now. He definitely needs the big leads to come in to finish this off, but it should actually time out pretty well with the off-map artillery clearing what is left in that forest as we see in the God of Isness, not much yet, but still good precaution to blow it up to Kingdom Come. If he captures that hill, it's pretty hard to get pushed off that hill if you fully secure it. True. True. Um, also worth mentioning, down to the south, his IS-2 is squarely in the sides of this BF-109, so if he goes down, this might be the end of the southern push. Yep. Yeah. God damn. Bomber plane. I, I always just... I'm amazed of how effective bomber planes, even just fighter bombers are in this game. Like, who, who even needs cluster bombers, man? And you can just drop a few 250 kilogram bomb. And the discount uh, tank. gets another... It gets an SU-76. Yeah. So this is definitely going to stem this push here. He still has the T-3045, which will help out a bit, but... It definitely gives Giante Bonds time to re-secure the southern flank. There's an 85 up north too, but there's also a Command Tiger, which is going to be terrifying, and now there is no more 85 up there. Nope. There's potentially another, uh, you know, a couple of platoons worth of infantry. They are running afoul of this artillery strike already, so I think you're right. This is an absolutely beautiful time to counterpunch. The yeah. question is the, the payoff. For the investment. My only real complaint with this push is Judge Bodge is not directly rushing his infantry into the hill, 
they're like going up north of the hill and then gonna go into the forest which is definitely gonna lose them a little bit of time in getting into position but i also do like how he's flanking a few of the sugs around the southern edge to try and secure this area and he could actually potentially capture his flag and cut off reinforcements from that bridge so he, he's definitely making his work there is one hiccup to that plan and it's those three vehicles just to the southeast of it the 285s oh, yeah. and the su 76 yeah if, if the sucks are around the corner they're gonna go kaput but he seems pretty content in leaving them yeah for now which is definitely the smart move true true this could be a game changer though yes he is not holding the south quite as well as he had used to indeed the Russians are across the river. Um, you can see right now we actually have 231s, a 222, and a couple 222s going down to, to the south. And more and more of these light vehicles being rushed into the north. So there's a piece of me that's wondering if Jardabaj is no longer quite as flush with his own troops as, um, well, the, as the Russians seem not to be as well. Well, he does have a lot of those sea face cards, so I feel like in terms of attrition, he will be fine long game. Or maybe he might have overpacked a little bit in terms of supplies, but nonetheless, I, once again, we got to see at least like six tigers being brought in. I mean, if you have that many tiger cards, we need to see many tigers. This will be embarrassing if the tiger gets brought down by the rinky dink attentions of a superior squad though. Oh yeah, it's very risky moving into his command, like supreme command tiger so close to the front line here. I mean of course it's still a tiger tank and can do a lot of damage but you only get one of him and it's, bo it's buff bonus alone is more than worthwhile and ugh. The Definitely... Yak 9s have been brutal. And the discount ducks are gonna go down here too, but come on. Yeah. So much ground fire at it. Yeah, yeah the Act 9s have been terrible against Stugs, but you know, when they when they smell tigers on the ground, they just knock them out. I think it's something about the rarity of the prey, you know, it's kinda of like, oh dude, like this is so great, we can put a tiger on the side of our tank, this is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the meantime, Tigers being excuse me, Stugs being engaged by those triple vehicles to the south. And I'm very concerned about the prognosis. Yet there's one tiger to the north. And there's another one to the south. Yes, another one to the south. So we got two so far, but that's it. Yeah. Yep. This is light vehicle play, I definitely feel like it's gonna come pretty handy here for Jard. I mean especially in the northern flank here, just the two two twos and they two yeah, two two twos and uh, what's it called? The two free runs as a close range against infantry are definitely going to help out in clearing some of these forests. And just even the killing SU-76 is a close range, it can even do that as well. And this is a good map for using auto cannon vehicles. What it's not a good map for though is sitting in your hindquarters and letting the enemy control a couple of what I would argue are pretty more easily taken flags. I feel like he has so much infantry in this forest just to the southeast of those northern bridges. Excuse me, southwest, rather. That flag should not have been bleeding this entire time. Yeah. He has all the SS pioneers and flam pioneers. He could pretty easily push back the force, but once again, the fog of war is a nasty. It's a nasty opponent, one of the deadliest in this game. But Green hates D has managed to. Stop this northern flank from actually making any major progress. The tank's coming in to finish up the job. So that's going to be pretty good in him. However, his southern offensive is going to get punished as well. So we're going to come back to the status quo as it was before. I'm trying to think what Jardabaj can do outside of just try to bring the victory column of Tigers. I really would have loved to see this commander rotate a lot earlier. He's not going to even still, and I, and I know we made the, the pun, the jokes we did before about his lack of zest for the front lines. But can you imagine the commander even another, call it 500 meters to the north, that buff might actually be enough to completely and totally flip the contention for that forest one. I think he does get a little bit closer. 
well, as I say, look at the combat over here, over here for the ninth mech. We have the whole idea of covering, what, six different squads overall? Yep. That is a completely different animal. BF-109 getting another kill. Pier 1 does finally get shot down, yeah, so... Finally, Green hates Seaman's and to pick runoff, and Jada Barge, after securing the southern flank, is going to counter-attack, which is definitely the right call to make now. He doesn't have much time. This is this is the time you just attack, move everything, and just pray to God that you actually so make some progress. Yes. Yes. But with light vehicles, I mean, the T-3045 is going to be the main pain, but if he kills out, yeah, the 222s and 231s can just finish things off. They can finish things off, but already we're seeing a couple of light vehicles being taken out. Stoke G, for some reason, refusing to fire on the Camarotti, despite the fact that he's right in front of them to go after the Dushka instead. Okay. Ah. Uh, it's gonna come down to the Tiger. By close range, that T 44 is a pretty nasty Tiger killer, and yep, the Tiger is not going to push. Because oh, there's, there's... 9 right there, too, yeah. so here it comes. Here comes another guaranteed kill. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 You know, there was somebody out there, I think, in one of the last casts, the few last couple of casts that we did, um, saying that this is the Wearaboo mod. I, I don't uh, know if that's really the case. I, I can I can see why people would think that on surface level, because it actually just super long names and, like, oh, it's a, like, German heavy tanks are Gary and all of that, and you got all the iconography. But the Russians are actually pretty damn good in this mod as well. Like in close quarters fights, especially you've seen in the last replay, Shrokis and, you know, after Machiki Scrodge and all of that are nasty. Absolutely nasty. And just the high explosive firepower that the two of us can bring in is also pretty damn effective in and terms of artillery. That's honestly been the story all the time. I mean, both both sides are just so devastating in this mod that every single move feels consequential. Yeah, uh, and as we've been seeing, just what would be considered pretty crappy light bombers in base game are blowing up bloody <laughs> just IS-2s and Tigers in this one. Oh, and at least, but it makes sense. I've always had a gripe with the fact that that airplanes have seemed a little bit underpowered yeah. in the base game. Um, but that's gonna be it. That's yeah. going to be it. I legitimately thought that the Tiger push had potential, but it just would have taken forever to get there. But the yeah, kills it, and losses are about the same. I'm sorry. It's, no, it's a, it's a hard map to really use. To like, I mean, the same with the IS-2s. They didn't do all that much either, it feels like. It was really could come down to the medium tank play. Any airplane. By God, the airplane. Well, ground fire taking out five planes from the Soviet side of things. And a Stug! Yes. How did a 37 mil kill a Stug? I think it might have AP shells, actually. It does. It does, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, okay. N not completely... As, in as impressive comprehensible. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, okay, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's... Yeah. The BF-109 is in the other direction. We've got a couple of kills for longer men over here. We've got Discount Duck picking up a pair. Um, another message been taking out two more... A lot of the German equipment, in my mind, did not quite get the the trading power that they needed to, if that makes any mm, sense. Yeah, yeah, it was really coming down to positioning on that map. I mean, the Stugs did do decently as we saw, but the whole lot of T-34s and SU-76s are very good close quarter like, tank fighting units. Just work really well, and just, of course, Russian infantry close quarters are pretty damn good. I definitely felt like Giardabot really screwed himself over in how he built his deck, going very C-phase heavy. He needed more A-phase and B-phase units to actually get some momentum going earlier on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, But you know what? Some days you get it, some days you don't, so... Yeah. It was well played no matter what in either, in either case. Uh, yeah, any final and, thoughts, sir? Uh, download mod. If you haven't checked it out, it's on the Steam Workshop. It's a whole lot of fun, as you see. It's very different from the base game. 
And, uh, yeah, you, you might as well. Exactly. What else are you going to do right now, right? Exactly. Um, what else are you going to do? Until then, while you continue to ponder that what else do you do at this turn kind of moment in your life, uh, we're going to say goodbye. So until next time, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.